Hey all, today we're gonna to be unboxing a UB key five. So what is a UB key? It's a type of 2FA. So 2FA or two-factor authentication is a ways of augmenting and adding security past just a password. It's adding a, another step, another check to kind of make it harder to access your data, your accounts, your crypto, your funds. So most people are familiar with them from SMS notifications, or they might have an authenticator app on their phones. For those in the crypto space, think a hardware wallet. That's what a hardware wallet is, is it's a dedicated type of crypto 2FA, a second factor of authentication. Um, and yeah, so we're, we're gonna unbox a little thing called a YubeKey. What a YubeKey is, it's pretty much like a hardware wallet, but for everything not crypto. And why is that important? Well, as part of a threat, mitigation is you need to mitigate all potential th threat vectors and there's yes there's your crypto and hardware wallets were great but well, what about your exchange accounts what about your social media what about your um, bank accounts these are ways of having tools that work like they work in the crypto space but in other things you do to make sure that you can't be vulnerable to phishing attacks or people can't access exchange accounts and drain them because they won't have your second level of authentication. It's all about increasing those layers of security. Uh, so yeah, before we get started, I just want to quickly make a word on buying from a reputable vendor. So don't buy these off Amazon. Don't buy these off Facebook Marketplace. Easy Crypto sells them. We get them straight from the manufacturer. You can also jump online, go to ubcosearchesa.com and buy it directly from the manufacturer, but never buy from a questionable source because you don't know what they've done with it. It's a security product. You want to make sure that from start to end, from manufacturing to consumer, no bad actors have touched this. And the best way to do that is by talking straight to a reputable supplier or a reputable uh, manufacturer. Ooh, there you go. That's what it looks like. You'll come in a little bit of packaging if you get it from Easy Crypto, but once you take it out of that packaging, that's what it looks like. That's the front, that's the back. Really, really simple. You want to keep this back bit. Other than that, it's yeah, pretty simple. So without further ado, we're going to open it up. It's pretty easy. You just peel like that. I'm intentionally going to hide the bottom bit of the USB. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like there. It's pretty simple, pretty basic. I'll explain why I'm hiding the second bit of the USB in a bit. But to run it over, it goes into a USB port into your computer. The NFC version of this also can be tapped on the back of your phone as a way of like kind of not needing to plug it in. You can actually get ones of these that you can plug into your phone. And the last one is that, that little bit there is actually a button. So when you want to use it, instead of having to uh, just like leave it plugged in, you actually need to press it. You actually need to touch it to use it. I actually already have one of these. I actually already have one of these set up. Two seconds, I just need to find it. Here's my one that I actually use um, for some stuff. I'm not gonna tell you what stuff I use it for. If we look at the back of the packaging, sorry, just here, can you see that? Yeah, so we can see you go to start at Yubico. So if we change over to this screen here, it will redirect you to a screen called setup. Once you're here, scroll down here, look at them, look at which YubiKey you've got. There's a whole bunch of different options to kind of quickly run over them for people. This one's if you've got a USB-C port, so a lot of the new Macs, a lot of the new laptops only have USB-C ports, really useful. These ones work with your older iPhones. That's one if you just want a really small compact device, but not with as many features, it doesn't have the NFC. But they have a whole, whole range of stuff here. So we've got this guy here, so we're just gonna click here and it's gonna bring up a little demo. This kind of covers off a little bit of information about it. If you're not sure, recommend checking it out. Have a bit of a look at this. That kind of gets into the question. Well, now that I've got my YubeKey, key, how do I actually use it? Well, you need to set it up first and there's a couple of ways you can set it up. So first and foremost, it's actually a tool. So when I say it's a tool, you can kind of use it however you want. You don't need to get these guys permissions to use it. These people don't own your data, but they do provide you a lot of support, a lot of help. So. Yes, they can do stuff, but you don't need to be dependent upon these people. That's just a really important point they make. When you go through the setup phase, you can either set it up to be kind of use it yourself. You can set it up via YubeKey, or you can actually set it up directly with one of these providers. So this provides a really, really good experience. Why you would set it up with somebody like this is because when you're logging into your Google account, you just need to plug it in. You don't need any third party software. You don't need anything like that. And it kind of highlights the companies you'd want to use this with. So your Google account 
or LastPass, which is a password management provider, I should say, Coinbase. Uh, so Kraken, Twitter, ProtonMail, lots of really, really important high security things. And then a few gaming stuff and Reddit, obviously, because high security. Um, but if you don't want to set it up with one of them, then there's also a couple of other tools that we'll show you today and a couple of other little things that you can do today. So there's three bits of software that you'd probably want to get from YubeKey. The first one, and we'll link all of these below, is the YubeKey Manager. So this is just a really simple way of using it across USB devices, setting it up to kind of make it work in the way you want it to work. The next one is the Authenticator. So if you've used an Authenticator app before, we can actually use YubeKey as it. Instead of having to remember a six, what is it, number long thing that changes every 30 seconds, we can actually just press that button on it. And because it's the NFC version of it, you can actually um, just hold it up to the back of your phone or just plug it into your computer and press the button. It's actually a really, really good experience and I would highly recommend people check it out. Um, and the last one I actually wanted to show, and this is for probably our more advanced users, is you can use it to log in to your computer. You can actually make it so you can't log into your computer. All your files can be encoded, protected, unless you have that YubeKey there. So it creates a really, really holistic kind of uh, security system. So with the NFC stuff, you can have it so you can use it to get in through a door, through that near field communication. So you tap it to open the door and then you have to plug it in to use your computer. It's been really, really heavily used these days in high security spaces. And it's a really, really good tool. This is what the two bits of software look like. Uh, here's the manager, here's the authenticator. This is on a Mac, your experience might change. I'm gonna quickly just plug in this new guy that I've just uninstalled uh, installed here. You can see it comes up. So obviously no accounts are set up with it today. I actually won't be setting up an account on stream. I was tossing up doing it. However, decided against it purely because security reasons. I would actually have to blur out pretty much everything. Um, so unfortunately we, didn't, we decided against that. But yeah, you just go through here. If you wanna do it, you go add an account. You can either scan QR code or add manually. That's that code at the bottom of the YubeKey key that I intentionally didn't show you guys before. You just add it there in a little name and then you can add it essentially as an authenticator device. Then you've got this one, which is the manager, which is more if you wanna customize it, make it do a little few other little different things with it. So you can see it automatically pops up, tells you what firmware you've got, the serial number, everything you kind of need to know about it. But if we jump into here to applications, you can see how you can configure it. You can see the button on it. You can configure it to be a short touch or a long touch. If you go through here, you can kind of see the different types of security responses it does. So when I say a security response, I mean like you're asked for a private number that that's just been texted to you. Well, this is a way of doing it. So the easiest one to do is configure a static password. It means you can use a YubiKey with any, anything, regardless of whether they support it or not, by having a really, really, really strong password. You can put a 200 character password in and your YubiKey remembers it. You just put it in, you tap it, it enters it and it doesn't get copied. It's really important actually that passwords don't just get copied to the clipboard and pasted because uh, viruses and stuff can see that. It actually acts as a keyboard and can sit and manually sits there and kind of almost like types away at your password really, really quickly. You can use it as a one-time password. So this is a YubiKey thing. And this is really useful because each password kind of increments and changes. So even if they copy one password, they'll only be useful once. And well, if you're logging in now, you've already used it. So it's a really good way of logging in. Uh, to applications that support it, which not every application does, but applications that support it in a way that even if somebody is looking at your screen, is copying everything that your keyboard puts in, still would not be able to steal it without that physical thing. This one, um, I won't set up this one. This is a little bit difficult. This is probably more towards your technical minded as well as the challenge response one, actually. This is where you're putting in that like six figure code, similar to what happens on your authenticator apps where you can just press this button and it'll enter an authentication code. And the challenge response is actually really, really interesting because it kind of works the exact same way as a hardware wallet. As in, you get sent a message, you get sent something, and you need to respond to it in a certain way to prove that you are who you are. You essentially sign up with your private key, you sign a transaction or a message with a private key, 
and then send it off to prove that you have the authority to make that transaction. So it actually kind of works exactly the same way as a crypto wallet. So if I go next, it'll be public ID, private ID, uh, secret key, so yeah, exact same stuff as a uh, hardware wallet. Not really gonna go into it because this gets quite technical. Um, and I would recommend you, when you're getting it up and running just to use it with uh, those services as previously mentioned. But yeah, this is a little security tool that you can kind of add to your repertoire, add an additional layer to stuff, just try it out and see if it works for you. And um, the last thing I just wanted to highlight is uh, Easy Crypto's got a sale on these at the moment. You can jump on to our shop if you want to buy it, if you want to add levels of security. Um, and then the last thing is if you like this type of content, let us know. We want to show you cool hardware. We want to show you cool ways to increase your security, keep yourself safe online. So yeah, till next time, thanks for watching. And yeah, if you've got any ideas, always leave them down below.